So, I guess moving on to <clears throat> stable coins. I had someone, I think, speculating in my comments one time that they thought that bridged over stable coins, like if someone bridged over, and I don't know if, if you would know for sure with some of these questions, um, like a bridge, bridged over stable coin, USDC, USDT, might be invalidated by their admin key. Or maybe they were just referring to the copied over stable coins, but what are kind of your thoughts on what's going to happen to the copied over stable coins and bridged over stable coins for sure i think this is i think this stuff's a little it's troubling i think there's actually a lot of things on pulse chain that are simpler than they feel but you're having to use layers of abstraction so right now if i was like hey xyz thing is going to happen to usdc everyone's like okay i know where my wallet is I've used my wallet, I've used E, I've used USDC. So everything they feel comfortable with, they're just curious about this movement, right? But if I say, hey, that same event is gonna happen on Pulse Chain, they're like, okay, well, I've never seen Pulse Chain. I've never accessed that network. I've never used that wallet. I haven't seen copies. I haven't seen wrapped over. And so there's, there's all these things where you're like, okay, I'm pretty sure here and I'm pretty sure here and I'm pretty sure here. And now you're trying to make this decision and it feels uncomfortable. Um, but most of it, as soon as this thing is launched, five of these variables out of everything go away. So when it comes to the, the actual admin keys of circle, now they are as, as of now only been used on a per address basis. So they blacklisted a few addresses with tornado, um, addresses that were associated with foreign powers, you know, a handful of relatively fringe cases. Um, but the point with all of these tools is that eventually they get used for something you don't agree with, right? This is the same thing with, almost every governance model. We just saw this with Arbitrum. We've seen this with, you know, almost all of our local governments or federal governments. If you give them the power to do something that you like in general, at some point in the future, they'll use it for something you don't like. So this is a big concern when it comes to anything that has admin keys in these relationships. Now, specifically on how this could look for uh, between stables that get bridged in versus copies. So right off the bat, copies are just what they sound like. They are just they are just a copy. They're just a Xerox copy of, of the USDC ticker symbol that existed or USDT or DAI. So they're not likely to hold much value. Now, they can. Things are weird. This is crypto. Um, but if we're looking, I would say the probability is pretty clear. They're not going to have much value. I would imagine that they're not likely invalidated. There's a lot of sort of fringe things with their legality. Um, it also takes a lot of time to go through. Um, it's almost as much of a statement to actually take the time to block them as it is to just kind of ignore them. So yeah. I wouldn't think that that happens, or at least it doesn't happen early on. Now, some of the things that could trigger that is if you start to try to get cute and cause certain things. So there's been a lot of speculation in the community about pairing an E side and the P side together, right? So taking any Ethereum uh, native and any Pulse Chain native and then putting them in pools, especially one-to-one. -one. Now, again, this is very, very much speculation that might be the type of thing that could cause any of these parties to be more aggressive as an admin key. So let's just imagine this is your, that this is any one of us individually, right? It's your business, right? You put out XYZ product and someone else has another product. Okay, no problem. But if they start to pair and say that their products are the same, then you might have an issue with this. So, um, you know, you start trying to pair these things together and make them, you know, make them have that same kind of value. That's something where a company has to pay attention. So, you know, again, just if I'm speculating on it, those are the types of things that you might see uh, increase the chances that any of these players get more aggressive with their admin keys. Now, for the bridged in stables, I don't think that's likely. Um, now, again, they're a company, they can, and that's the important thing about remembering with admin keys. So with the bridged in stables, you have the bridge risk and then the admin key risk. Um, but as long as these things are being productive and we don't see any kind of fringe cases that might um, you know, cause that company discomfort, which again, part of the problem, uh, I wouldn't think that we have too much issue with the admin keys. Okay, cool. And just to clarify for people, if you were to bridge a copied over stable coin from Pulse Chain to ETH, it would, it would hold the value that it has on Pulse Chain over on Ethereum. So let's say one USDC is worth 10 cents if you bridge on Pulse Chain, like the copied over USDC, mm -hmm. when you bridge it over to Ethereum, if someone were to do that for whatever reason, it would then be labeled like PUSDC on Ethereum and it would be worth 
whatever its value is on Pulse Chain, correct? Correct. So the way bridges work yeah. is they're just poker chips, right? So if you take um, USDC on ETH and then I bridge it over to Pulse Chain, it doesn't become the USDC on Pulse Chain. Those are two different things, right? So the same way as if I take um, a, um, you know, there's other dollars in the world, right? If I go take any of any, like if I go take a Canadian dollar, and then I drive across to the U.S., it doesn't become a U.S. dollar. It's still a Canadian dollar. It's just in the U.S. territory, right? It's the exact same thing in bridging. So whenever you bridge, what you're doing is taking uh, a poker chip copy of that. So it, when you take a PUSDC and you bring it over to Ethereum, it doesn't turn into an Ethereum USDC. What you do is you brought over a <laughs> poker chip that says Pulse Chain USDC on it. So it's just a representation of the original token. These things don't uh, swap over sort of in the ether. So if you... Same way if you bridge over BTC, you bridge over Bitcoin Cash, even though they you know, started as a fork, they're different things now, right? Uh, it'll be the same with any of these USDC copies or HEX or anything else. If you bridge them over, they're a wrapped version. They're a poker chip representation of what you bridge, not what it is natively on that other chain. Right. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Just clarifying for people who think they're going to like <laughs> bring over their Stock up USDC your, and yeah. yeah, they're like, oh yeah, I'm the genius. But um, yeah, so I I have another question. I think I know the answer to it, but why not use the bridged over stablecoin as opposed to the liquid loan stablecoin? So we actually touched on, uh, you know, a lot of that was just kind of the, the first couple of questions. So right. one, one is you don't know what Circle are going to do. That's a problem. But when it comes to USDL, it doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what CC thinks. It doesn't matter what Dave thinks. Any of the players on, on LL. Doesn't matter what any of us think. If you guys wanted to go do whatever it is with USDL, there is nothing we can do about it. You take it, run and do whatever you want with it. You can take it. If you can figure out a way to get your uh, local gentleman's club to take it, you can throw it all to them. There's nothing we can do to slow it down. It's all you guys. Um, so everyone that runs any of these things, there's no admin keys, there's no governance. When it comes to the, the wrap stable, there'll be a lot of reasons to use them. We just want to understand the tool, right? So, um, all these things have a place. So if where you'd want to use some of these wrap stables is especially as if you're trying to cash out or bring value over, right? So if you wanted to take some, some profits or some part of your portfolio on pull chain and you wanted to move that into ETH or, or cash out or any of these things, well, there's no reason to take USDL, wrap it over to, to Ethereum, have small liquidity pools and try to do all this mess. No, if you're, if I'm trying to take 10 grand worth of profit on pull chain, and I want to go put it in the, the bank account. Okay. Well, then it's easier to take wrap USDC, come back over the bridge and use traditional USDC. And then you just go about your business the way you always have. There's no reason to get complicated with USDL. Um, but again, if you're trying to hold these things, if you're going to do commerce, if you want to have, um, you know, broad liquidity on pulse chain, that's what USDL is meant for. And you'll have all that preferred risk profile that we discussed earlier, uh, rather than what you have with USDC. Plus, there's still bridge risk. Bridges are a problem, even if it's pulse ramp and it's something that will have a lot of faith in the community, uh, you know, to make these things run well. We still want to be careful about these things and realize that there's an extra risk profile. So now I've got the risk of a bridge and the USDC uh, risk all is one. Like that's what that wrap stable has as far as risk profile. Now, again, most of the time these things will be fine. Most of the time these things will be safe. But if we start talking about holding value and having liquidity pools, we want the least amount of risk profile possible. And that's where USDL will have a big incentive. The other side is there's also this indirect uh, advantage of USDL in that rather than having dollars and treasury bonds locked up in who knows where, BlackRock, all these sort of uh, large mutual funds and different money market accounts, what gets locked up for USDL is Pulse. And if you're a big Pulse holder and you want to take profits, you don't want there to be a bunch of Pulse running around. So it, the more Pulse gets locked up to be used as USDL, the less Pulse there is on the market to sell. So that adoption of USDL as a uh, beneficial component to all these other facets of the chain also means that more and more polls get locked up. So validators, we would love to have great validator uh, participation from across. One, there's good validators and two polls get locked up. We'd love to have USDL. has a better risk profile. It's built by the community and a bunch of polls get locked up. And the more polls it gets locked up, the less polls there is on market. So there's, there's the direct advantages of the stable coin itself. Uh, and then the other side is, again, it means locking up polls, locking up collateral, um, more, uh, you know, a more mature ecosystem gets built around all these cool things that we like. 